Did you ever notice that the religious like to trot out supposed atheists when they can get them to support their side? Today, we're going to take a look at that and see why it doesn't really get them anywhere either. None of their tactics do. So, strap in and hold on tight, because this one is really pretty pathetic. So, this time, we're going to try something a little different. This is a segment from a podcast called The Hayden Clark Show, and today, he's got an atheist on named Benjamin Blake Speed Watkins. That's a hell of a name there, isn't it? And, at least, he says that he's an atheist. Now, I don't necessarily buy that for good reason. If you go looking for him online, he's very, very pro-religion. He's a complete accommodationist, and that's the kind of thing that I don't respect at all. But my respect isn't required, so we'll see what he has to say anyhow. Is this guy going to be at all impressive? I wouldn't be holding my breath. Um... So I don't think that there are any particularly strong arguments for theism, but I th do think that there's at least four modest arguments for theism. And I would say you're completely overplaying your hand, but I'm willing to listen because I usually am. Because in all honesty, I have yet to run into an even halfway decent argument for anything that the religious have to say. Why? Because they have to assume that the things that they already believe are correct without ever having to go back to square one and prove that they know what the hell they're talking about. They don't start with the evidence. They start with their faith, and that immediately invalidates everything that they have to say. Because your faith doesn't mean anything. Only the evidence does. But sure, go ahead. Let's see what impresses you because I'm pretty sure it's not going to impress me. That we can say, look, these are evidential chips that fall in favor of theism. If we're just dispensing with burdens of justification and following evidence where it leads, these four chips fall in favor of theism. Okay, now you've got my attention, because I've never seen anything that remotely gets you to that side of the tracks. Because, as far as I'm concerned, you can't just start off with your faith. You have to start with the evidence, you have to start with the demonstrable facts, and then maybe get to faith later on, once you have some kind of a rational justification for it. If you have to presuppose God to get to your evidence for God, then you're doing something entirely wrong. If you have to presuppose the validity of the Bible before you can start to argue anything, then you're doing it all completely backwards. You have to prove your source material first before you can use it as a defense, and these people are singularly terrible at that. But then again, they don't care, do they? Because they only care about their faith. They only care about their fifis. But again, I'm willing to listen, just in case, so let's see what you've got. And so, I think the first is moral agency. Yeah, uh, no, just no. Now, it's possible that he's talking about something other than the bog-standard theist moral argument where they just assume, not prove, not demonstrate, they just assume that God must be the author of morality, and you can't just assume your conclusions before you show that they're valid. And that's really all the religious can do. They have to just assume these things because it makes them happy, and it doesn't work that way, sorry. So, I've got a feeling that he's about to tumble down the wrong path, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Please do better than the standard religious nonsense, because it will never, ever, ever get you anywhere useful. So, the fact that there are moral agents in the world um, is more likely on theism than naturalism. Why? Because theism implies the existence of at least one moral agent, God. Uh, okay. That was even more idiotic than I was thinking, and that 
kind of takes some doing because when you've been around the religious for as long as I have, you know how bad they can get. Theism boldly asserts something which it has absolutely no way to objectively demonstrate made up by people who ought to have access to the real world. There are a lot of moral agents out there, and whether you like it or not, a lot of them disagree with what is moral and what is not. The religious claim to know what true morality is, even though most religions disagree on the details, and that just makes the whole thing absurdly dumb. Anybody can make any kind of shit up that they want. Invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies are the only true moral agents in existence. Why? Because I said so, and that's effectively all the religious are doing too. Just because you pose a solution, that doesn't mean that you have a solution. God provides a moral framework. Well, yeah, that's your story. Now, show that your story has a demonstrable basis in objective reality. Because anybody can say anything they want. I don't care what you say. I care what you can prove. And these people, whether they like it or not, they just can't prove a damn thing. So, this isn't getting anyone anywhere fast. So, the, the, the probability of observing a moral agent on theism is one. No, it's still zero until you can actually observe one, and the religious are piss poor at actually trotting out their god, aren't they? So, until you can prove that this thing that they claim is a moral agent is actually real, they've got absolutely nothing. Just like I would if I was serious about the invisible pixies being moral agents. They're made up just like your god is. All of the unsupported claims in the world don't change a thing. You've got to do a hell of a lot better than that. Yeah. Now, naturalism just cannot make any similar claim. There is just no implication of naturalism that can come close can I just say that, that as a theist, I wouldn't even agree with that. But anyway, that would be a different <laughs> discussion. And if you notice, even the theist thinks that's stupid. I mean, it's pretty bad when the religion that you're trying to defend thinks you're full of shit. Because that's the reality here. They all are. Every single one of them are completely full of shit. So can we please get on to something else, maybe something that actually makes sense? Because this is a non-starter from the get-go. Um, fair enough, fair enough. But um, another straightforward chip, I think, is the fact that people have religious experiences and mm -hmm. cogent religious experiences. No, people have experiences to which they arbitrarily attach religious significance. They can't prove that anything that they supposedly experienced has anything at all to do with any gods. It's all empty claims based on fifis and zero facts. This is something that I've talked about before. These are people who are starting off with a particular religious or social preconception, and then when something happens to which they can offer no immediate explanation, and usually it's something to which they can offer no emotionally comforting explanation, because that's really what this is about, they just leap to the conclusion that, well, God done it without any kind of skeptical evaluation of what actually happened. Because, as we all know, they just don't care. They really like the idea of a god, therefore a god becomes their go-to explanation for anything that they can't immediately figure out. And this goes for all religions. All of them. Muslims always credit Allah. Hindus credit one of their many gods. Christians credit theirs. That's all they're ever doing. They're just saying, well, I think God did it. Well, okay, prove it. Yeah, they can't. And while all of these people are claiming that their God done it, they are openly denying the reported experiences of everyone else because everyone else's God isn't real, right? And the other religions are saying the same damn thing about them because, obviously, their God isn't real. It's just a giant clusterfuck. All of the claims in the world don't mean a thing until you can prove that your claims are factually correct, and none of them can. 
Seriously, do something besides flapping your lips because you're just wasting everybody's time. Experiences that move them. people to have to change their very forms of life. Um, theism gives us a very ready explanation for why people have religious experiences. Having an ad hoc explanation is far different than having factual truth. Immediately, that's why I'm questioning whether this guy is actually an atheist, or at least a rational atheist, because nobody that I know of would ever give any of these laughable reasons the time of day. This is just embarrassing, and this guy ought to be ashamed of himself for getting on the internet and making a complete fool of himself, because that's all he's doing. Religion makes people happy. Well, that isn't a good reason to think that religion is true. Heroin makes people happy too, but you'd have to be a fucking idiot to jab a needle in your arm. This is why I'm starting to think that this is one of those fake atheists that the religious like to trot out. People who say, well, I'm an atheist. But clearly, they've never even thought about the crap coming out of their mouths. They say it because they think it will appeal to the religious audience, not because it's actually true. So, that's two down and laughably so. Anybody think he's going to redeem himself in the end? Yeah, I don't either. No. It's b because it's there communicating with the divine. Now, do I think that that evidence is undercut by other facts? Yes, but we won't get into that right now. Straightforward, if we're just in a vacuum mm -hmm. talking about which better predicts religious experiences, it's theism. It is not. You can't say that you're communicating with the divine unless you can prove that the divine exists in the first place, and the religious can't do that. I mean, I can say I'm communicating with the spirit of George Washington. That just doesn't make it so. He says there are other factors involved, but you can't just sweep those aside. You have to actually address the problem at hand, and he can't do that. Just because you really, really, really want to think that you're talking to God, that doesn't mean you're talking to God. That doesn't mean anything except that you're a delusional fuckwit. Just because you're arbitrarily stapling God did it onto your feelings, that doesn't prove anything. It just shows that you're gullible and stupid, and that's nothing you ought to be proud of. Beauty is, I think, another one. Now, I realize this is a controversial datum. Not everyone believes that aesthetic properties are in the world. Seriously, that theist looks like he's about to cry. Beauty is bullshit because there is no universal standard of beauty. Now, I've gone through this one before, too. Hell, I've gone through every single religious argument there is, and none of them stand up to a moment's critical scrutiny. There are some common elements that evolution has programmed into us, but there are so many different views on what is beautiful and what is not that it's hard to believe that this nugget keeps surfacing because it's just stupid. This guy is a complete fucking nincompoop. No skeptical atheist would ever say this. None. Not ever. I like to think that we're not that dumb, even though I'm sure that there are some out there that are, but this is just, look at the trees writ large. I like that so God did it. Well, I'm glad you like it, but you're going to have to trot God out here if you want me to take you seriously, and good luck on that. You have to have an actual brain in your head, and I don't know that the guy on the right has one. The guy on the left hasn't opened his mouth yet, so I can't be sure, but the guy on the right, yeah, he's a dumbass. For real, yeah. But I do. I am a realist about aesthetic properties. So, And I think aesthetic properties are more likely given theism than naturalism. Naturalism doesn't give us any reason to predict Aesthetic properties, you know, properties that something like, you know, Mozart would have. And guess what? Not everybody likes Mozart or anything else. The idea of beauty is entirely subjective, but as we've seen many times before, the religious are incapable of recognizing that not everybody is exactly like they are. They all think that everybody is identical to them. That's why they run around saying, well, everybody believes in our God, even if they say they don't. Yeah, bullshit. 
That's where most of these arguments go completely off the rails when they assume that they're automatically right because they really want to be and that everyone else automatically agrees with them no matter what. Except lots of people think you're nuts and if we shake our magic eight ball, all signs point to yes. You haven't proven anything, you've just proven how credulous you are. And that's not a good thing. Like, naturalism just isn't going to explain that like theism can. It does easily. There are elements that most people think are beautiful in a potential mate, for instance, because there are visual indicators of health and genetic well-being. We are programmed by evolution to seek out the most healthy specimens to breed with. Those elements are the things that we find attractive. This can't be that hard to figure out, can it? Well, maybe for this guy, I don't know. We are attracted to symmetry. We like things in warm colors over cool ones. If you go to a completely different culture, you're going to find a completely different set of criteria for what those people think is beautiful. All this indicates are people who are completely ignorant of anything that goes beyond their front door, and that's pretty typical of the religious if you notice. They don't tend to know a lot beyond their own beliefs and their own direct experiences. It's why they're so ridiculously wrong all the time. And so then I think the last one, which is, again, controversial, but I think it's interesting, is if the universe began to exist, if it was finite, like, I think it's still an open question whether or not the universe began to exist or is finite. Um, I'm inclined to think that it's eternal. Oh, good. An appeal to the cosmological argument. And that puts the last nail in the coffin of this guy's atheism. If he is, he's just absurdly ignorant. He makes Ray Comfort look like a certifiable genius, and that's why I think this is just a con job. Someone playing make-believe so the religious can pretend that their arguments are actually convincing to the non-religious. Except they're not. They never are. Because you notice that every single one of these has been a standard Christian apologist talking point, right? Every single one of them has been ripped out of the religious playbook, and the religious don't care because the religious are just in it for the feels, not remotely for the reals. So I'll let him finish up before I rip him a new one, because this is an embarrassment for all involved. But I can't, like... I wouldn't bet my house on it. No mm -hmm. way. Right. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I think that that's, you know, if the steady state um, view of the universe was to favor naturalism and something like creation ex nihilo, a beginning, a beginning to the universe was to favor something like theism. Well, then you, you just have to let the evidential chips fall where, you know, yeah. it, you know, this is, this is how the chip fell. This one falls in favor of theism. Except it doesn't. There is no evidence for any kind of creation ex nihilo, nor any other kind of creationism that you can come up with. All of the evidence that we have proves a naturalistic origin for the universe. We can track it forward from Planck time, and we haven't run into anything that we can't come up with a naturalistic explanation for yet. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't still mysteries. There likely always will be, but that doesn't mean that you can just fill in those mysteries with, well, God did it. You actually have to show that there is a God, and that said deity was actually demonstrably responsible, and the religious are piss poor at doing any of that. This guy can't legitimately be this stupid. At least I hope not. God, that's a sad thought, isn't it? He's got to be a religious plant because anyone who's actually looking at the evidence, anyone actually concerned with the evidence, they aren't going to entertain these emotionally derived bullshit ideas. He'd look at them, see there's nothing there but fifis to back them up, and then reject them based solely on that. Because you don't take ideas seriously because they appeal to your emotions. They actually have to have something tangible to back them up. Because that's how rational people work. I don't care what you claim. I care what you can support with objectively verifiable evidence that shows that your conclusion was reached logically and not because it makes me happy. 
because that's all the religious have, and it doesn't impress us one bit. You have to do a whole lot better than that, and the fact that this guy isn't even on the level of a high school student, that suggests to me that he's just a plant. Or an idiot. Or both. I mean, I don't know. You decide. Sorry, I'm not remotely impressed, and you shouldn't be either. So, let me know if you are down in the comments, because... Wow. Just wow. Boom.